Hello once again. So uh, today I'm going to describe a little bit about uh, the aims and objectives of our project. And this project is awarded to U.S. Pakistan Center for Advanced Studies in Water, Mehran University of Engineering and Technology, Jamshoro, uh, through National Research Program for Universities uh, funding uh, by the Higher Education Commission of Pakistan. So uh, first I will discuss a little bit about uh, our team members. So beside me, there are our uh, co-principal investigator, Dr. Samara Zafar. Uh, she is from Asian Institute of Technology, Bangkok, Thailand. And our main consultant is Dr. Istifano Vigno Delhi. He is from Italy and he is altimetry expert and he is guiding us throughout this project. Then we have our collaborator, Ms. Sophia Hasnan. She is CEO of LinkedIn's Private Limited which is a small private enterprise located in Karachi. Beside that, we have uh, many research assistants, including Ms. Jasra Rahman, Ms. Fiza Saeed, Ms. Falak Nas, Mr. Taqir Ali, and Ms., uh, Mr. Usama Rehan. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, I will uh, discuss that what is our primary goal in doing this project? So the long-term goal of this study is to enhance the low gauging frequency of the Indus River by introducing the virtual stations of satellite radar altimetry. A virtual station is a location where the satellite uh, track passes the wat any water body. Okay, so there we can assume that th this one is uh, actually uh, acting as a virtual station from where we can uh, acquire the water level heights through set after doing some processing. And that we will describe in these uh, trainings throughout like online and the physical one, but how we are going to acquire uh, the final product, which is the water level heights. Uh, if you see, this is uh, the, uh, downstream reach of uh, the mighty Indus uh, River, uh, which is within, uh, we are just like uh, limiting right now our study to the province of Sin. And you can see that there are different uh, uh, virtual stations from Sentinel 3A and 3B. So these all uh, locations can be considered as uh, the gauges from where we can acquire water level heights. Uh, we also uh, will be discussing that at what is the need of doing that project. So actually, uh, we all know that for uh, uh, an effective man management of any water body, or we can say the major river like Indus River, uh, we need to have an extended uh, gauging network. But unluckily, the Indus water has a very limited gauging network, especially at remote locations, we don't find any gauge. And uh, mostly the gauges uh, or the measurement of the water levels or water flows are, uh, be, uh, it's being performed at the big structures like dams and barrages. Uh, altimetry data can support or augment flow data in rivers where gauging, uh, gauging frequency is low, like uh, Indus River. And river levels derived from satellite radar altimetry, they are cost effective and com as compared to flow gauge uh, acquired data because for Altimetry uh, derived data, we only uh, need some capital cost for processing or setting up a system uh, in which we can uh, continuously acquire data, but there's no uh, like, uh, or very, very minimum maintenance cost as compared to what we need to do for the flow gauges. Sometimes they uh, are doing, they, they, they malfunctioning or maybe they are damaged due to the flood or something uh, other bad thing if uh, that happens. So, uh, that is one advantage of the altimetry derived or altimetry derived virtual stations. Uh, 
we have multiple objectives of this under this project so uh, the main objective is to derive time series water heights at all virtual stations which we uh, i just uh, i have shown you in in the map uh, down buddu barrage along indus river and uh, we are using only sentinel 3a and 3b data uh, but there are other satellites as well and dr marco will be presenting different satellite missions in his lecture it will be a very comprehensive lecture so don't miss it uh, but we are limited to only sentinel 3a and 3b data and uh, other objective is to install real time water level sensors at the sen barrages we have already installed some sensors and uh, we are installing more sensors uh at uh, gudu barrage sakhar barrage and kotri barrage uh, the third objective is to develop a flood model using gauge and satellite data usually what happen that when we develop a flood model we don't uh, have uh, uh, in situ data to validate our model so what we will be doing that we will be using the gauge data to calibrate our model and then we will be validating it through the satellite radar altimetry data uh, our fourth objective is to build capacity of local experts through trainings so you can consider this uh, today's activity and uh, the uh, the days to be followed is one of uh, the those trainings uh then our fifth objective is to develop a web based model uh which we have named the trim the river indus monitor and it's in uh is is in making i'll i'll show you some of its uh, screenshot as well in this presentation and our sixth uh, objective is to develop sustainable indus river management blueprint for pakistan okay uh in this project sentinel 3a and 3b satellite data are used and through which we are studying the temporal changes in water heights at the indus river at all virtual stations and even we can go beyond uh, the the sind province uh, we can cover the entire indus uh, river as well so uh, we will be showing some uh, efforts in that regard as well the first validation experiment of sentinel 3a data over the indus uh, at that that has been done in our previous study at two locations of the indus river and one was the downstream guddu barrage and the other one was uh, upstream sakhar barrage so we were lucky that we had uh, two satellite tracks and at these locations or near these locations and uh, since i already told you that at the barrages we have uh, measuring water level measuring mechanism or gauges so uh, we have both in situ data and the satellite data so it was easy for us to compare both of them and do some processing and look at how they uh, um, what type of compromise they have if they are fitting with each other or not so i I'll, i'll show you some of the results of that study as well so you can see these the, the, the lines you can see on this synth map these are the sentinel 3a and 3b tracks and uh, the location where we have studied it for the, these were uh, guddu barrage and sakhar barrage and you can see that at these locations we have sentinel 3a tracks available <laughs> a more closer view of these locations you can see sakhar barrage we have at the track at the upstream of the sakhar barrage whereas at the guddu barrage we have that track which is downstream of the barrage okay very briefly i will uh, describe that what data sets we uh, used for this uh, uh, in this project for doing this processing or to uh, derive the water levels at these locations so and a little bit of the methodology uh, but i will only describe very briefly because uh, uh, in the physical session we will be demonstrating it and we will be doing like uh, uh, processing all the data and through hands on training we will be doing all these steps so very briefly i am describing this for those who would not be able to attend the physical meetings 
so uh, we the the main uh, the basic data uh, were ultimately derived water levels and then we have a permanent water surface from global surface water explorer or from uh, google earth engine uh, why we need it i'll just describe it in a minute and also to calibrate uh, or to validate our uh, two set of data uh, we have in situ data which are the ground observations so this is very briefly uh, i will describe that we have downloaded data from gpod and this will be very uh, in very detailed manner we will be describing that how we can download this data how we can process this data in uh, the gis platform uh, which is uh, familiar to i think all of the participants so it's very easy way of doing or processing the data so we have gauge data which we acquired from sim irrigation department uh we have satellite data which we acquired from uh, gpod and the link is given in here and more uh, dr marco and dr jerome would be describing about that he will be available for the discussion if you have any question you can ask them uh global surface water will be from google earth engine uh and uh, then what we uh, actually from google uh, from global surface water we extracted the water seasonality or the permanent water surface okay and in the analysis part we derived the water height you can see uh, a very simple formula in there i'll explain that what this formula is telling and that at the end we compare the in situ water height with satellite data and at the end we uh, identified the spatial and temporal flow patterns so this is uh, the explanation of that equation which i have just shown you in the methodology we are interested to calculate the height you can see there is a satellite there are different reference surfaces like ellipsoids and geoid all the uh, the participants who are familiar or are the gis uh, users they know all these terms so Uh, the satellite is measuring the altitude so altitude is measured by the satellite uh, and uh, then uh, we have uh, uh, the range is uh, is uh, calculated by the satellite and altitude is the uh, uh, range is uh, subtracted from the altitude minus the geoid the, the it, it is that whatever geoid is used so we have to have it from a certain reference uh, surface so we make some corrections and there are some atmospheric corrections as well so the, these are also applied in there and all these parameters altitude range geoid and corrections they are available with the data sets the satellite radar data set uh, has all these parameters uh, in the form of a net cdf file okay uh there i will only show you that what was the use of the permanent water surface actually uh if we uh, take the pulses these are the pulses if you see uh, different pulses the these these are the different satellite passes so the satellite when it passes through uh, a location so next time it has a little bit shift but it's okay okay so it it uh, it's not necessary that it will pass at the same uh, exactly the same location there might be a little shift so you can see in different colors that these are the satellite passes at different time so uh, the the pulses we have it is for the entire uh, area but we are interested only to acquire or extract those pulses which are on the water surface because if we include other pulses as well which are uh, on the land surface so it may add some noise uh, in our data uh, results so that's why what we needed that we needed a permanent water surface and then we just uh, make a subset of those pulses which are only on the permanent water surface so you can see the dark blue color is the permanent water so we extracted only those pulses which are on the permanent water surface and only we considered these pulses in our analysis and what we do that for a certain time one uh, track one track has multiple pulses so we we uh, make an average of uh, all these pulses whatever height we have calculated for each pulse so we we uh, can make an average and we can suggest that this is the average water height at this location 
and then we can compare it with the uh, gauge data. So that was uh, the earlier uh, map was at the Guddu Barrage, and this is for the Sakhar Barrage, upstream of the Sakhar Barrage. So for Sakhar Barrage, we use the gauge data uh, of the upstream Sakhar Barrage, and for Guddu Barrage, we use uh, gauge data gauges which are located at the downstream of the Guddu Barrage. Uh, this you can see that we in our analysis uh, we considered uh, three years 2018 2019 and 2020 so so 2018 2019 2020 so we expected permanent water for each of these years and this is only i'm showing you for the Gutu barrage but same thing we did for uh, the sakhar barrage these are some of our results if you see Altimetry versus ground observation at the Gudu Barrage. So the continuous line uh, time series is from the in situ uh, data, uh, gauge data, whereas the points you can see these are from Sentinel 3A. Why these are not, uh, we are showing in uh, them as a uh, line because this is a discrete data. Uh, for uh, each uh, 20, after each 27 day, we can acquire uh, GPOD data or three Sentinel 3A data. That's why I'm just showing you that, uh, and you can see that it's a very good compromise. Maybe the people who do those analysis, they can see that it's a very good uh, uh, compromise. And those who are interested in uh, the statistics of that, we can also share with them our report or our preliminary results, we can show them that how much uh, errors we are getting uh, in this analysis. Uh, this you can see uh, that these are the altimetry versus ground observations at Sakhar Barrage. And uh, here again, uh, uh, we can see that it is very well capturing the high flows. Uh, you can see some of the low flows in here. So due to the uh, temporal resolution of 27 days, it couldn't capture those. If you can see, there are three very low flow uh, inst uh, instance, uh, and these are the clo uh, gate closing times. So only one uh, satellite pass was uh, coinciding with those dates. So that's why we could capture it. Otherwise, the data were not available for other two days. So that is a main problem uh, which uh, with the satellite data, but again, as I have said that today, our experts from European Space Agency will be uh, uh, with us. So there are not only like one or two type of satellites, there are various type of satellite missions. So we can have multi-satellite analysis as well that can uh, resolve the temporal resolution and also the spatial resolution as well. So these are uh, uh, the same uh, map which I have shown in the beginning, but here I have also uh, uh, described that where these the virtual stations are um, present. So you can see that we have some uh, virtual stations uh, near Indus Delta as well in the coastal region as well. So we uh, this study or these virtual station can be helpful in uh, analyzing the flow patterns uh, of all uh, along the Indus River. So th this is, you can see it's in the coastal areas near Indus Delta, one virtual station, some snap uh, screenshots. This is near our uh, region where we are right now, uh, Jamshoro in Hyderabad, two station you can see in here. Uh, so, uh, some of the limitations, as I have already uh, described you, that the main uh, limitation is that the exact location, and these are these were the limitations which we faced while validating our results. Okay, so these were that when we were validating at Sakhar and Gudu Barrage, so we couldn't find the exact location with in situ gauges and tracks. So uh, you uh, see that at Gudu Barrage, we had downstream track, uh, which was 3.74 kilometer downstream of the Gudu Barrage. And you also have seen the results. And even then you uh, witness that the results are not bad. So maybe the same, some differences which we are getting might be due to uh, the reason that 
we don't find uh, the gauge data at the exact location uh, where we have uh, our track. And usually if we have uh, a water body like lake or a natural lake or some reservoir, there we have the, the water surface doesn't change much, but in river, if you see the topography as well, so going like a few kilometers might change the topography as well. So there might be can like in, in future, we can also uh, uh, make fine tune our data uh, considering all these differences as well. And at the uh, Sakhar Barrage, the upstream track was around 0.7 kilometer uh, of the Sakhar Barrage, upstream of the Sakhar Barrage. So these are some of the discrepancies which uh, might be leading to the some of the differences which we have just seen in our results, but it needs to, to further like uh, uh, look into it. So we are uh, doing this analysis. We are in middle of this, uh, maybe when you'll be having our closing seminar, we'll have some uh, better results of our analysis, or maybe we would, uh, would be would have been included some more parameters that can make this, these are or these are affecting the final results and uh, maybe right now we are ignoring it. So uh, I'll, and the other uh, limitation is that the time difference between the satellite and in situ data acquisition, Sentinel uh, Sentinel 3A pass time uh, passes after uh, 27 days over the study area and the time of it's around uh, 5 p.m. or 17 hours at a specific dates, whereas in situ gauge data is recorded manually at early morning every day. So if there is a change between that from the early morning and the evening time, if the gates are opened or some uh, uh, different thing has happened, some water regime has changed, then it cannot be captured in that data. Uh, temporal resolution is 27 day, which is uh, many flood uh, managers, they have this uh, very obvious uh, objection on this data that they say, that for flood monitoring where we have to keep an eye on the water surfaces um, at a very like maybe in, in within within hours that uh, the things are changing. So 27 day is um, re resolution is not accepted for flood monitoring to those people, to those experts. We are also working on the upper Indus reach as well. And uh, the main objective of our uh, in uh, looking at uh, uh, the upper Indus basin uh, was one that we were very lucky that we found a pass at the Tarbela reservoir where again we had a very extended uh, time series gauge data. And the other thing was that that since we were having a very good results uh, downstream of the Indus River which is a relatively flat area. So we were thinking that we should also check its validity at the mountainous terrain, that it, uh, it also giving some good results or it, the noise has been uh, adding into it. So we are in process uh, and Dr. Marco is helping our student, Ms. Jasra is working on that and he is helping and we have to do some extra processing because in the mountainous area, it's not easy. We have to remove a lot of noise and we have to, um, not all the pulses can be considered, but there are other parameters as well, which we have to look into those parameters and uh, to do some fine tuning of the data. Uh, this is uh, again the satellite tracks at the upper Indus Basin. And this is our uh, study area, which is Tarbela Reservoir. But the good thing is that it is uh, uh, the disadvantage, I mean, the bad, the negative thing is that it's very difficult in the mountainous terrain to avoid the noise. But the good thing is that, that if uh, uh, the track is a bit uh, away from uh, the gauge, but within the reservoir limit, so we can like assume that the uh, you know, the water surface is static at a certain time. Our next uh, objective was the 2D flood modeling. 
And for that, we have acquired uh, uh, a software, which is very easy uh, to use. And we have acquired it, uh, purchased it from civil geoengineering software company. And it is uh, GeoHetras. It's based on Hetras software, but it's like, uh, it's more user friendly and uh, the civil geo team is helping us in developing our model for the lower index basin. Uh, Ms. Fiza would be demonstrating uh, what she has modeled uh, lower index basin in our physical session. So we'll be having a hands-on uh, session on that. Uh, these are some of the preliminary results if you see. Uh, GeoHetras 2D flood model calibration is at the top. Uh, it is uh, at Upper Indus Basin at the Bidu Barrage. You can see, and uh, the two, uh, the model data and the gauge data. Again, you can see that it's a very good compromise. And this is for 2019. And for the 2020 data, the calibration, the validation is uh, not as good, but it's also uh, not bad. So again, the statistics can be available on demand if you want. Uh, this is our uh, real-time sensors, which we are, uh, some of them we have already installed and some we are going to install uh, by the end of this week at uh, Buddu and Sakhar Barrage. And then next month we will be installing uh, two uh, gauges upstream and downstream of the Kotri Barrage. So you can see uh, Ms. Sufia and uh, her team is helping us in this uh, and uh, uh, installing this. Our team would also be joining them for calibration exercise. So uh, next you can see upstream Sakhar Barrage, downstream Sakhar Barrage. And this is a portal from uh, which we can get the data uh, and this data uh, these uh, measurements are available at each 15 minutes time interval. So uh, maybe when we have uh, these uh, data available for extended time period, so we can uh, uh, overcome that limitation, which I have already discussed that the time difference between the uh, in situ uh, measurements and the satellite uh, past time. Our another objective is uh, the development of the trim, the river index monitor. So this is, is this is also in making, and we have uh, developed it. Uh, its interface. You can see uh, to whom we will uh, like give the access can uh, uh, log in or make uh, register at this site, and then what uh, the the user can have it can see. The, all the virtual stations along the Indus River. And if that person click any uh, virtual station, then at the result, uh, the time series water levels will be available for that particular uh, virtual station. So that uh, it's still, we need some fine tuning in that. We will be adding more things in that, more data in that. So we will see um, uh, that how we, uh, also, we will also be including in that the results of our flood modeling. What we are intended to do that once our model is calibrated for the entire uh, lower Indus basin, then at each virtual station, we will be uh, looking at the model flows and the model uh, um, uh, discharges from the, from the model. And then uh, we will be deriving or uh, or uh, developing the rating equations. And through these rating equations, whenever we have the satellite data water level heights, because our satellite data only, uh, it give us only the water level heights, not the flows, okay? So for that purpose, we need to have uh, rating equations. So once we can develop those rating equation, using uh, uh, the model data. So we can use those rate, rating equation in this uh, 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 trim uh, and at the, with the water levels as well, we can also be able to show the water flow time series. This is again, the interface of that model. Some of the conclusions, 
So this study will provide a basis to develop a low cost national surface water level monitoring program in Pakistan to support sustainable water management. And this study found a good agreement between the satellite radar altimetry data and water levels in the downstream reaches of the Indus River, which has a flat topography. And further work is being done on the, uh, uh, the upreaches in which we have uh, mountainous terrain. And hopefully we will be done it by the end of the next month. So we will be able to compare and we will be able to calculate that how much error we are getting. And then we can compare uh, all our study areas that in which area we can very comfortably use the satellite data and where we can expect some errors. Uh, this technique will enable us to observe river level changes on different virtual stations. And subsequently, we will be able to enhance the low gauging frequency of the Indus River by introducing the virtual stations of radar altimetry. Uh, some of the work which is uh, going along is to calculate flows, uh, as I've already told you, using altimetry derived water heights and rating curves or rating equations. Uh, water sensors will provide ground data at times matching exactly with the satellite pass time. And then we can also uh, go for the extended scope studies like interprovincial and transboundary may be possible uh, using data from altimetry missions which is usually our big issues um, uh, dealing with these uh, controversies uh, some of the research outputs uh, uh, are uh, listed here uh, two uh, one uh, conference paper is already uh, being presented by jasra rahman uh, which is on automated processing of satellite data to map, map temporal water extents and water surface levels at Tarbera Reservoir using RGIS model builder. She has automated all the process which we uh, uh, previously was doing manually. And uh, the another paper she has submitted for IGARS, uh, the International Geoscience and Remote Sensing Symposium 2022. Uh, which is comparing the accuracy of altimetry data in mountainous region with a low gradient river reach, a case study of Indus River, Pakistan. Two papers are in preparation. Uh, one is on calibrating flood 2D HECRAS model for 2019 medium floods in the lower Indus River reach using altimetry and SAR data. And uh, the other one is comparing Dahiti and Geoport derived water levels, which is a case study of Indus River. Some of the acknowledgement uh, I would like to give to my uh, all those who supported uh, uh, this project, besides uh, all of the participants who are taking interest uh, in this uh, um, training. So we are very much thankful to all presenters from different time zones who took time for us for their busy and a very precious uh, time schedule. Uh, Dr. Stefano Vigno Delhi, which is uh, who is the foreign expert, is acknowledged for his guidance throughout this project. Thin Irrigation Department for providing uh, gauge data and support during field visits. Uh, we would also like to thank Mr. Mohammed Umar Karim, uh, who is from Food and Agriculture Organization, in providing the analytical data. Uh, Ms. Sufia and her team for providing water sensors at very subsidized rates. And thanks to the US Pakistan Center for Advanced Studies in Water, Mehran University of Engineering and Technology, Jam Shoro, for supporting project activities, including project director, finance department, logistics, and IT support. Especially Naeem is here, so I would like to call him by name. Uh, he's supporting us throughout this online session. and. Uh, it's like, it's not only these two days, he is working continuously from many days and with our uh, project team, our students. And a special thanks to the last but not least, a special thanks to the Higher Education Commission Pakistan for funding this project. And thank you. If you have any question, we can take one or two questions or if you not, then we can proceed further. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So there are a few questions from Ma'am Ajuman. 
फर्स्ट इज सेंसर यू आर इंस्टॉलिंग आर लिंक टू जी पॉड और दीज आर फॉर कैलिब्रेशन पर्पजेज एवरेज प्रोवाइडेड डेटा कैन बी एक्सेसिबल एंड यूजेबल फॉर रिसर्च एज वेल एज कमर्शियल यूज इन द फ्यूचर विच डेटा एंड द डेटा फॉर द सेंसर्स फॉर द फ्रॉम द सेंसर्स फ्रॉम द सेंसर्स actually uh, the main custodian of these sensors uh, is the irrigation department so let's decide them if they can share like they are sharing right now whatever their gauge data uh, they are they shared with us and with others as well i am not sure about the commercial purposes usually for academia they provide it for free so uh, we have installed these sensors with their permission and uh, we have given an undertaking that we will be only using that data for our study um, purposes so but you can say, once data is there so you can contact them and maybe if you can like uh, give the same undertaking which we have given so they why not they will share with you and uh, thank you ma'am there is one another question uh, one more thing uh, what about the altimetry data is freely available if you uh, like learn how to process it you can yourself do it because it's freely available we are also using the free satellite data that's that's the charm in it uh, thank you ma'am and uh, next question is considering the differences in the along track path of the satellite over the river at different dates and also based on the difference in water topography how uh, you are able to harmonize the different data yeah that's uh, that's we are re- searching researching like i have said that uh, in the flat areas where top topography doesn't take change much if you see in the lower indus so uh, uh, going along a 1 or 2 km downstream of the indus river you don't find a very uh, 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 steep slopes but the the situation is reversed in the mountainous area so that's why we uh, have some noise in that but it's a good question you can keep that question again for dr marco and dr uh, dr uh, jerome as well because they have a uh, global experience our experience is limited to indus river so they might be in a good position to give that answer but whatever we have experienced is that that our results were very good in the downstream reach of the indus river but uh, still we are not uh, getting good results in at the turbilla dam uh, so ma'am another question is how are you calculating the uncertainty at the water level you have used the formula before as you have shown in your presentation as the precision on range and amplitude from the satellite will more accurate uh, in sea compared to river is it uh usually uh, the satellite altimetry uh, originally it was meant for uh, sea level heights so it's very recent uh, that they have started to work for inland water bodies as well and the experts they are using uh, a different algorithm which they were using for the sea level uh, heights because the the, the, the it, uh, one thing is that the inland waters they have uh, a very um, their their widths are not as big as we have a sea is a big uh, water body so uh, and the levels in rivers they ch- it, it also changes with topography so there are different different uh, differences and different algorithms and these work actually if i say that this is being done uh, by the experts and we are very lucky that today we have those experts who are not only like designing those satellites which are in the space but they are also processing its data deriving those algorithms and refining those algorithms with time if you see uh, uh, look at the literature you can find that each and every day there is some refinement in the algorithms and there are new things coming along new strategies new algorithms new models new satellite missions so they are there you you really i would say that enjoy their company and ask as many questions as you want okay ma'am can we apply this technique to canal irrigation uh again the same thing which i have said that the, in the canal the width is very limited and uh, uh, last year dr stefano uh, two years back uh, before the pandemic he came here for the training um, uh, and he gave training in our center 
and he told us that they are working on some algorithms that can deal with uh, the low width uh, water uh, channels as well but right now i am not sure and another question is what is the purpose of sensors and or can we measure sediment contents by using the sensors or if the sensors are connecting with gboard no 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 sensor is only uh, where the sensors are installed they are only uh, recording the water level height from mean sea level okay so uh, they they actually what they do that they uh, uh, those who know about the sensor mechanism that the uh, the time is calculated in which uh, the uh, sensor receives a signal back from uh, after striking the water or any surface water surface of any surface and then we use simple uh, physics equation and calculate the distance traveled in that time so and then we calibrate it according to sub, some reference uh, surface in our case uh, we calibrate it with the, the mean sea level which the details were provided by the irrigation department as they were measuring their gauges were installed there so we install near their gauges and the purpose was that that we uh, uh but it, one thing would be that it will be unbiased okay uh, there are many controversies look uh, they they say that the, or maybe there there might be the human error involved when you are manually uh, measuring uh, the water levels and also it will be continuous it each every 15 minutes you are getting it so we can better coincide the time of the satellite pass Uh, ma'am can you please just briefly describe what are those algorithm to compute uncertainty i'm not sure which type of uncertainty you are asking we have done some statistics like uh, uh, we calculated uh, the error uh, root mean square error and different um, other parameters uh, we which we can share you and our previous study also uh, has a report report which is published and it can be accessed through our web uh, us pcas center website so you can access it and you can see that what parameters statistical parameter we used for calculating the errors uh, so the last question is can we use this uh, technique for lake water as well for lake yeah 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 one of my students she worked on uh, manchhar lake uh, calculating the water level differences for manchhar lake if you actually what happened if you have in situ data or gauge data so you can calibrate it with that it can only give you otherwise it can only give you the difference between the two levels that one time the level was that and the other time was uh, the difference is that okay so um, unluckily we don't have any gauge installed at the manchhar lake but we can do it that if we install there so we can have the in situ data and then once we calibrate it with the in situ data then uh, we can have it any time uh, whenever the pass uh, the satellite passes over that water body but uh, it is like limited with only those water bodies on which the passes are available that's the main limitation so if we don't have like kinjar lake we don't have that pass available so we can't measure it so we were lucky that we had like at the sakhar and guddu barrage where in situ data were also available so once validated then we can use all the virtual station so for banchar lake as well we have pass available so we uh, did um, and you can also find uh, some papers on that as well conference presentations by ramsha muzaffar you can see uh igars uh, i think uh, she presented in igars i don't remember the year but you just google it in the google scholar and you will find it 